<clears throat> the first question I have here is from Matt, Cramp Matt C. Crampton. And Matt uh, is a maker who says, my woodworking and metalworking have finally progressed to the point where I need to invest in a good drill press. This is awesome. Uh, I say this is awesome actually for a reason that's worth elucidating because... I love it when you know enough about your tools to have a point of view on the next level you want to go to. Um, so much so that when I was a professional modeler, uh, I had an axiom that if I needed a tool more than three times a year, I would buy it. Uh, and that was a really good axiom. That was my sort of attempt to codify institutionally for myself that need and that matriculation of like, okay, is this a tool I'm going to keep borrowing or is it a tool I'm going to actually uh, execute a purchase of? So I love that. I love it whenever our consciousness expands within our field of, of creation to accommodate that next level. So congratulations on needing a good drill press. Matt C. Crampton continues, I've been evaluating different options, new and used on the market, and during this process, I've also started becoming familiar with mills. I know you love your mill, and I've watched many of the builds you've used it in. I've seen many aftermarket mill vices that are made to be used on regular drill presses, and I'm trying to figure out for an amateur maker my, like myself, when should someone look at buying a fully fledged mill versus a standard drill press? Um, this is a great question, Matt, and it's worth spending a little time on. Uh, my first pass of answering this is going to be, if you're asking the question, I think what you need is a drill press. Um, they do fundamentally different things, even though the two tools are similar shapes. That is a motor with a spindle that holds a thing, and the ability to lower that thing into your work. By that description, drill presses and mills are identical. The difference between them is that the mill has thousands of pounds of cast iron, keeping it from flexing in any way. And the drill press, not so much. So I would first off tell you, I would not recommend buying one of those two axis milling vices for a drill press and expect to get anything useful unless you're milling foam. Yes, yeah, seriously, like a, a foam or a super, super lightweight urethane plastic, cast plastic, maybe, but mm -mm. However, I think I have a specific set of recommendations for you. Um, I like old tools. I have a proclivity for old tools. And I'm gonna say, that if you want a good drill press, it would be hard to do better than a secondhand Powermatic from Craigslist. If you live in an area where Craigslist has tools that come up for sale, a Powermatic drill press is a great, a great thing. I own a Powermatic drill press. I really like how they operate. I like how reliable, how robust they are. I like how easy it is to buy parts for them. Um, and I think a used Powermatic is better than most of the things you could buy new at that price point. Again, your results may vary. Um, I mean, you know, if you can find if you can find one by by a, a, a real maker like Klausing, did Klausing make a drill press? I'm not even sure they did. But if you can find something like that, that that's a real. Th those can be amazing finds on Craigslist. But I'm going to so. Your skills have progressed, you, you need to invest in a drill press, which means that you want a more reliable table. I think you want, uh, you want a little more power. You're maybe drilling bigger holes. Um, and then the question, is, that also then begs the question is, what do you want to use a mill for? Uh, and a mill, you can do a few things. You can take a, a block of material like this and you can mill out features in it. It is highly unlikely, like I have said, that you'll be able to do that with any reliable utility on a drill press. I tried doing it way back in the day. I thought it would help. It really doesn't. But there is an aspect that mills do that drill presses don't, which is to drill regular grids of holes. 
Now, on a mill, you can do that to sub one thousandth of an inch accuracy in terms of that grid. But I recently bought a Palmgren uh, XY rotary table, and literally, it has both of these things. It's got an X. It's got an XY axis table. Uh, on top of which is a rotary table with degrees marked out. Now, I did a whole video about how that was not useful for me here in the cave on the mill, because for it to be useful for me on the mill, you really need the rotary table to be underneath the XY table, not on top. And there's a really good reason for this. I'm going to try and explain it. If the rotary table is on, t what, what you want a rotary XY table for a mill, the reason you are going to use it is to do things like chamfering the edges of a rounded corner box. That is a thing you could do on a rotary table with an XY table on top of it. And that's specifically because you the, the milling bit has a relationship to the center of rotation of the rotary table. And if you are going to utilize that to chamfer the edge of a rounded corner hole, you need to not lose the center. You need to not lose the center of that rotary table. And if the rotary table is on top of the XY table, you lose that center instantly. I hope that's not too esoteric to try and explain and get you to picture those things in your mind. All of this is the longest possible way of saying, this is my brand, uh, I would get yourself a used drill press on Craigslist and I would buy yourself a Palmgren XY rotary table. They show up on Craigslist all the time. They were made in Chicago for Sears in the 50s and 60s. When I bought mine in the comments of my video about them was a guy whose father had plausibly assembled the very one that I had. Um, Palmgren stuff is made to a nice tolerance for a drill press. It is not a milling machine tool, but it is a perfect augmentation to your drill press because you can you have an XY table so you can drill grids of holes with the XY table and you can drill circles of holes with the rotary table. When you get good at that on a nice drill press, I think that that's the moment at which you'll be able to look and see, hey, I think I should invest in a mill. And, uh, you know, for, for baby's first mill, I, I'm going to recommend uh, the brand that I have here as my new benchtop mill, which is Precision Matthews. And they make a bunch of different benchtop mills. Mine, uh, the, the 720 VT, is that what it's good? Uh, it is uh, the biggest. 728 VT. It is the biggest of their bench tops. It's a it's a beast. I love it. But they make smaller ones. Um, Matt, it's a great question. I'm sorry to take so long to answer it. Dex Euromat says inches or centimeters are the units a choice or a habit? They're a habit. I think in inches. I move towards centimeters. I recently, actually, we're just I'm just about to shoot a video of this, but in cleaning up the tested's offices. Um, I engage with interior spaces in a really specific way in that to wrap my head around an interior space, I have to build it physically. And I've done that with my storage space. I've done that with this shop. I've done it with every house I've lived in and owned. Uh, and I made a drawing for Tested's offices. And when I made that drawing, I did it in inches, right? I, uh, I went around and measured each room in inches, not feet, specifically inches. And then it occurred to me, because I like to work in 124th or 148th scale. 124th is half of dollhouse scale, 112th. Uh, and 124th scale is a really bread and butter good size for, uh, for making an architectural model of your house. It's not so big that you can't manage it. Uh, for interior decorating, I'll make a 112th scale stuff, but in general, 124th scale. Anyway, I'd done all these measurements in inches, and I was like, wait a minute, I could just take these inch measurements and call them millimeters, and I'm at 125th scale, because a millimeter is roughly 125th of an inch. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. Um, I do try and translate on the fly in my head between metric and, and imperial all the time because it's useful to me. And a lot of stuff I buy is metric. Precision Matthews Mill has actually both metric and imperial screws on it. Um, it's a habit. It's what you grew up with. 
Um, I'm sure there are people out there who learned in one and have switched entirely to another. My hat is off to you. I, that would be really hard for me to do. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects questions. You get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members-only videos, including the Adam real-time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.